Hi guys, it's Miss Sarah from the West Bank Club. And since it's favorites week, I want to share with you one of my favorite things that I have loved since pretty much as early as I can really remember myself. Um, and it's my favorite world created in books. And that's The Lord of the Rings and Middle Earth. Books written by J.R.R. Tolkien. The first book, The Hobbit, that's in this whole world is was written in 1937. And then Tolkien wrote the trilogy, which is The Fellowship of the Rings, The Two Towers, and Return of the King. And those were published starting in the mid-50s. Tolkien himself, the author, was a linguist, which a linguist is somebody that studies and really learns about languages. So what he did was create these languages and basically built a whole world around them. That's like if you were to create your own language and then wrote the story of how that came into be. So we've got English history and how that language started and then French and Spanish. Well, he created lots and lots of languages for this world. And I started reading the books when I was in about third grade. I read The Hobbit a couple of times because I kept losing the book and having to start over. And then I read the Fellowship, The Two Towers, and The Return of King, all when I was in sixth grade. They're pretty big books, but I loved every minute of it. Um, I actually learned Elvish when I was in school so I could pass notes without my teacher being able to read them if she ever caught me and my best friend at the time. And this world is huge. It goes on for centuries, and it, but it really focuses mainly on this one particular time, and it's about this group, kind of ragtag group of people trying to destroy evil. And there's a lot of things that you can take from it. What I really took was a lot about bravery, friendship, and even if you feel really, really small, one of the main characters and most important people is really, really small. Legitimately, he's short, and he's considered very small by all the other characters. And he's really the one that saves the entire world from destruction. And when I was a kid, I was pretty short. I'm still not very tall right now. Um, but when I was a kid, I found that super duper important. Um, and it really also helped my love of other literature with Harry Potter, um, with worlds like Star Wars. I connected with those characters because I kind of felt that even though I was small, I could do my things. And even if you feel small right now, feel like you're not really important, you really, really are, and you can do amazing, super important things in this world. It just, that journey might not have started yet. And so what we're going to do is also take a little talk, um, have a little interview with one of my favorite characters. Um, and one of the big things about the Lord of the Rings trilogy and The Hobbit is they were recently, and by recently I mean since the year 2000, turned into movies. There's three movies, one for the Fellowship, one for the Two Towers, and one for Return of the King. Most recently, they create, created a trilogy of movies for The Hobbit, which to me, it wasn't that big of a book. So you kind of wonder what happened in the movie making process for The Hobbit. And we're going to have a little talk with one of the characters to see how they feel about the differences in the book and the rich story that's there in the movies and what they told through visual imagery. So let's go, let's let's bring in my special guest now. So first off, Legolas, I want you to, I thank you for joining us today. That is no worry. After leaving for the Undying Lands, time is no matter. Good to know. How's Gimli doing these days? His days are filled with contentment, like many of those in these lands. It took many days for his presence to be welcomed, but now other inhabitants are not bothered. I'm glad he was welcomed. I was a little worried about him after finishing the book. Now, for those that don't know who you are, can you tell us a little about yourself? Who might those mortals be that do not know? I am Legolas, son of Thranduil, Sindarian elf of the Mirkwood Forest, who was one of the fellowship to destroy the Worn Ring. During the time of the Fellowship, I battled a Balrog in the mines of Moria and defended Helm's Deep in the Battle of the Hornburg. Thanks for the quick introduction. I wanted to talk to you today about the differences in your story from the books that were written by Tolkien 
and your portrayal in the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings movies. Ah, uh, the visual images of myself were quite inaccurate. When I viewed the, what did you call it? Movie of the Hobbit. I was quite confused. I never met Bilbo Baggins during his time in Morkward with Thorne and his company. I had heard of their presence, but never laid eyes on the group. I would have liked to have met them as Gimli's father Gloin was among the company. What about the romance that was shown in the movies? Oi! Toriel is not a true elf. She was imagined for the movie. I would have liked to speak with Keeley about this falsehood. There are no known records of partnerships between dwarves and elves. To rewrite that, that has already been known is just ludicrous. I'm quite unsettled by the tale. I wish that it had not been shown. It tarnished Keeley's honor, and he cannot defend himself as he was lost during the Battle of the Five Armies. Though my feelings of draws have changed since meeting Gimli, I'm quite fond of him and would likely be fond of his kin. I cannot speak for all dwarves in their likability. Dwarves have the same dislike of elves for our century-long strife. I would have greatly appreciated that the dwarf and elf relationships had been portrayed truthfully. But alas, they were not in the Hobbit movie. Would you prefer that anyone that wants to know the real story of Middle-earth and your adventures, that they read the book? I would have much preferred that. Through the written word, Tolkien was able to capture the depth of relationships between the Fellowship and those in Middle-earth. The movies cut out many of the battles that we participated in, the obstacles we overcame, and many important fellows and ladies that helped along the way. You did not see many of the creatures and lives that are in Middle-earth that I wish had been shown. I also noticed they left out the strange creature that is Tom Bombadil. He has many adventures to tell as well. It really does sound like anyone that wants to read the full adventures should really read the books. Once again, thanks for taking time out of your maybe not so busy day to speak with me. Adieu, fair lady.